All right. Hello, future. Hi, guys out there. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, I have the pleasure today to be joined by Rob Allen, who is the entrepreneur in residence at EFTPAS. Um, Rob, thank you for joining us. First of all, we appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Hi, Zenobia. Real, real pleasure to be here. Yes. So, you know, for those who are new to FTPOS, um, can you tell us just a little bit about uh, what FTPOS is and then your role there? Yeah, so FTPOS um, is Australia's national debit card infrastructure and operator. Um, it's been around in various forms for about 30 years. Um, and it's pretty ubiquitous in Australia. Every Australian knows FPOS. They all, all have a relationship with it. Um, they make their payments with their debit cards um, in stores and now online. And um, it's, a, it's a pretty trusted brand. The um, Australians don't really know what FPOS is. They just know it's there and they trust it and it's, you know, it's part of their, their daily life, you know. Um, there are billions of, uh, of dollars of value going across the, uh, the FPOS rails, payment rails, um, every year. And um, it's a scheme. So it's a scheme like other kind of international card systems, but um, it um, comprises of 19 of the, uh, the, um, the nation's iconic brands. So you've got four big banks, you've got two retailers, um, the big supermarkets. Um, and payment systems providers and gateways and, and, and other um, parts of the, the ecosystem. So um, a bit like a governing council, really, the, the, uh, the, ni <clears throat> the 19 members of the, the FPOS uh, scheme um, run the scheme and um, um, provide payments for, for Australia. So every credit card, or sorry, every debit card that's issued in Australia um, tends to be multi-network. So it has the international scheme, Visa or MasterCard, and it has an FPOS um, uh, routing uh, ability as well, which um, um, is configured by the, the merchants themselves if they want, um, or by the, the, the customer if they, if they choose it at the, uh, the, the POS device. Oh, interesting. So everybody uses it, whether they know it or not in Australia. Everybody <laughs> uses it. Yeah, everybody uses it. So um, confusingly, FPOS is used in, in many ways. So it's, it's kind of overloaded by the banks as well as um, um, the, the, the network rails, which is what we are. Great. And how did you first, you know, come to learn about uh, distributed ledger technology and then, you know, Hedera in particular? So I've been um, <clears throat> I've been working in payments uh, for a long time, um, calculating twenty five years, and um, since you were seven, right? Since I was kind of yeah knee high to a grasshopper, and the, thank you. And the, <laughs> um, I actually had a career in the military before that, so I was um, I built battlefield computer systems. But uh, I got into banking, started building payment systems and core banking um, platforms. And then uh, with the advent of uh, Bitcoin, um, I was very interested in the, the, the new blockchain infrastructures for, uh, for payments and for value transfer. Um, and then over the years, I um, kind of got more and more into the technology. I'm an engineer, not a crypto dude, um, more of a, a technologist. And um, I was working for a bank called Nordea Bank, um, who joined the R3 consortium. So R3 now um, is Corda as a private permission blockchain. So I got, um, got interested then. And then when I came to Australia five years ago, uh, I worked for PwC, uh, ran their fintech practice, and had the ability to start looking in more, more deeply in, into blockchain. We built um, a number of blockchain-based platforms on the technology of the day, um, but uh, none of it really scaled um, in the ways that we needed to for, um, for cross-border payments and for, for some of the other use cases we were looking at. And um, having uh, built platforms on four different blockchains, um, I was finally introduced to, to Lehman and Mance in 2017, I think. Um, and then everything clicked. So 
Um, I've been a I've been a big fan of Hedera ever since. Um, but it was only really when I came to FPOS that I was able to start, you know, um, um, presenting a case for proofs of concept and pilots to uh, to test the technology in real world use cases. And of course, everything had matured by then, so it was quite quite an easy sell. Right, and and everything moves so fast in this space. Absolutely, too. absolutely. Um, can you share some of the use cases that FTPOS has, you know, either developed or is thinking about? You know, I think it, we always talk about it's really helpful to understand Hedera is this underlying base layer, but the magic comes in the applications. Yeah, and absolutely. And the, the business value is built on, on top of the rails in much the same way as FPOS provides rails, but it has a digital strategy which extends that that you know the core um, payments capability, and and that digital strategy has five main areas. It's um, e-commerce. So traditionally, we've been more of a point of sale uh, interaction in in, in um, stores, but uh, e-commerce obviously is is a real focus for, for the digital strategy. Uh, digital identity, which is my other job, is running the digital identity um, business. And um, things like QR orchestration and new ways to initiate payments and uh, provide a far richer data-driven experience. And with that comes APIs and working with FinTech ecosystem and you know, all of that that's some great stuff. So within the digital strategy, which is as chief entrepreneur uh, or entrepreneur in residence um, is within my, my remit, um, I get to look at emerging tech and ways to apply emerging tech. And so when we, when we ran the proof of concept with, um, with Hedera last year, it started in July, we, um, we looked specifically at micropayments. So micropayments for me is the killer app um, on that business value layer. It always has been for me. Um, the ability to really leverage the scale and the trust and the, um, the, you know, the fair ordering and security of the network in a way that uh, traditional payments networks do and have to um, but they just don't scale so um, it, it was really interesting to me to look at ways that we could um, do subsent payments because payments today cost the infrastructure 10 cents 20 30 up to you know dollars um, to to make just in terms of unit costs of, of making um, payments and, and transferring value. So entire business models are being missed out on because the, the unit cost is so high. When you can push a unit cost of a, a transaction to a hundredth of a, a cent, then um, all sorts of other things start appearing, you know, in terms of you know, removal of um, the, the um, the added layer of friction that has grown up around it, you know, um, subscription services and ads and, um, and all the other stuff that um, has kind of gets in the way of a really good user experience. So we tested uh, micropayments and I still think micropayments is the, um, is the number one use case for us. Particularly interested in things like um, Internet of Things. So all of our devices in the future, the billions of devices that are going to be in the world, the web of devices that we will have around us, all kind of with delegated authority from our digital identity, we'll be able to make tiny transactions um, between, between them. You know, my, my Fitbit will be paying, you know, your fridge for whatever it might be, I don't know. But the, um, I like the use case of um, us all, um, being ferried around in autonomous vehicles and um, my autonomous vehicle pays your autonomous vehicle you know, a cent to move out of the way so that I can, <laughs> you know, it, it, all, all in kind of this delegated um, threshold based way. So there, there's, there are use cases that we haven't really thought of, but we, we, uh, we focused on, um, we, we focused on the low hanging fruit for the proof of concept and that was the paywall Killer, you know, the subscription service, the pay per page, you know, um, as the page turns, the author earns, which isn't my phrase. It's, um, I think it's Alex's, Alex Taylor's um, from KPay, who's, you know, delivered some great stuff as well in the community. And um, 
so yeah, we were looking at that, but we were looking at it as a, as a way of integrating it with the other capability that FPOS uh, is, provides and builds, like the APIs, our new payments wallet. Um, so we, we acquired a, a payments wallet called Beamit, which we're um, now using as kind of a driver for, a, for kind of consumer touch points and consumer experiences. Um, and, um, and then we, we built the, um, an app net to, to create a stable coin and um, plugged it into HCS. So, uh, and, it, and it worked beautifully. So all of these things came together. Now we need to commercialize it. And um, that's the next phase. But <clears throat> so IoT and that whole area of infrastructure, which uh, will be required by smart cities and all of us in the future um, is one thing. Commercializing micropayments is another thing. And then we've got digital identity. Um, so Connect ID, which is my, uh, my identity business. Um, we're looking very closely at self-sovereign identity models and um, decentralized identity using the DID methods and the um, verifiable credentials. At the moment, it's a federated model, which doesn't require a blockchain or a distributed ledger, but um, it's, uh, it's interoperable. So our, our framework is in interoperable, which means that we should be able to simulate uh, more decentralized and uh, uh, self-sovereign models so we'll uh, we're actively looking at that and in fact we um when we were doing the micropayments proof of concept we worked with a uh, an identity wallet provider called miko and uh miko are also um kind of a hedera related ecosystem player so we're drawing together all these threads and um, they did a great job providing an identity wallet which we could put payments into um, and on our identity project, we're, we're looking at um, providing verifiable credentials into um, other use cases. So, um, yeah, I'm very keen to uh, support the ecosystem to, to grow because then you get network effect. Right. And mm -hmm. I, I truly believe in the future there'll be, well, pretty much every business in the world will be operating on Hedera. They just won't know it. <laughs> Speaking of HTS, you were a judge for the recent HTS hackathon. Um, you know, I know uh, we, we've announced the winners, you announced the winner of your challenge. Can you talk a little bit about them and maybe some of the other projects that you saw in the course of your judging? Yeah, and it was really hard, uh, to be honest. There were 60 odd projects, 600 developers. Wow. Uh, focused uh, for, a, for a month. The Discord channel was, was lit. For a month, I mean, really, really good. So um, <clears throat> our challenge was um, to provide a, a browser extension for um, for the Hedera te uh, token service. When we were doing the uh, the micropayments POC, I mean, we we chose not to go with HTS mainly because HTS hadn't been released, and you know, we we were too far down the HCS pattern, but. Um, you know, I've, I've dabbled in um, NFTs and other types of token on other projects, other networks. And, um, and you need the wallet, you need the, the browser wallet, you need somewhere to put the tokens. And uh, on Ethereum, that's MetaMask. And it's a really great experience, um, quite apart from the fact that Ethereum, you know, isn't. Um, but the, the MetaMask part of it is, you know, you need somewhere to hold all your tokens. So I thought it would be really great for us to have um, have that within our infrastructure, within the, the Hedera kind of community. And, um, and so that was the challenge. And we had, um, I think, 11 projects that um, submitted to our challenge. Um, a couple of them kind of didn't really meet the, uh, the, the criteria and were being opportunistic. And, I, and, and actually one in other categories. So, you know, all, all credit to them for, uh, for, I'd have done the same, I'd have submitted to all of the challenges, <laughs> just in case. Um, but the, um, we had a hard choice actually between the top seven actually out of the 11. And, um, uh, but in the end we went with uh, one called Ivy, uh, Nathan James's um, project, which uh, was, was awesome. Um, Pablo and uh, Christian and um, a dude called uh, Dodecan um, were, were, were very, very close as well. So we've offered 
um, mentoring and um, support um, as a prize to all three projects rather than just the top one. But the Ivy one, um, IV, which is really cool because Hedera is Latin for common Ivy. Um, but the IV wallet was um, just edged it on user experience and um, integration with my, my HBAR wallet, which is actually quite a, uh, an important piece of our uh, tool, tool set, especially because that's how, how we integrate with the hardware um, wallets like, uh, like the Nano Ledger. And so, um, yeah, it, it, and I just loved the enthusiasm. I loved the, uh, the, the, the great um, energy that was put into the whole project. And it was superbly run by, by Cooper and Lena and, and the team. So um, all credit to them as well. Um, it was really good. It's quite hard to maintain enthusiasm for a hackathon over four weeks, you know, virtually. So that's, that's really hard thing to do. And um, yeah, they did a great job. So um, unfortunately, we've uh, we've lost Cooper to uh, Dispenser Dinwiddie now, but um, I'm sure he's not he's, going far. He's not going far. No, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Well, Rob, you know we so appreciate you being a judge, and I think it's really exciting. You know, not only for us, but for other parts of our ecosystem to be um, seeing what people are building on HTS and you know exploring that. It sounds like you know you have some ideas there and. Um, you know, and are working with uh, some some great young entrepreneurs in terms of building that out. Um, yeah, and, and I want to continue to support them. You know, it's really important that um, these guys who are um, building on Hedera are encouraged. You know, they're supportive. They they've got all the um, all the go to points to uh, to to help them um, flourish because. Like you said earlier, it's the, the business value layer, the things that, that, that are uh, built on top of Hedera that create the, the ecosystem value. And then network effect, you know, one, one leads onto another, which leads to another. And um, you know, we've seen recently, you know, 7 million transactions growth, you know, almost day on day, you see the chart going up and it's not even breaking a sweat. So, um, you know, the, uh, um, the volumes will, will pick up, you know, the, the, the price is picking up, which is crazy. Um, although long term, long time coming. And the, um, and just the, the, the enthusiasm in the whole community um, is, is great. So this truly is the year of scale. And we're, and we're only just starting. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's only March. Well, Rob, thank you so much for your time. Um, we appreciate everything that you do for the Hedera ecosystem. We appreciate you coming on today and just sharing a little bit more. I think it's really helpful for people who um, both are new to FTPOS as well as who have heard a little bit about the story. And uh, we look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Thank you very much. Um, they, most of you know where to get hold of me, but um, I'm very happy to, to respond um, in, in any way that uh, they reach out. Thanks very much. Samira. All right. Thank you, Rob. Cheers. Bye.